Nice. Hang on. Don't want to, I don't want to knock it over. Have you got enough luck? <laughs> We've never been on a car launch together before. Never, but car and, launches uh, have an awful lot of benefits. I, and one of those things is, I, I thought they were looking at me a bit weird when I went. Is it all right to take this out to the car? <laughs> well, we've got we've got tables and chairs in here. I'm Don't know. Just, I, oh, that's, that's all right. right. No, it's, look, I'm not moving. We're not going anywhere, am I? I've got a blooming carousel of food. So you've got some scones there, which... Yeah, well, got, it's not um, just for me. That lower level's for you as well. Oh. Oh, bollocks, I forgot a spoon. Hmm. <laughs> 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 this is how motoring journalists really do this it. This is how motoring journalists do it. I was just thinking that when, um, when I was perusing the buffet. Mm. How do... You know those car journalists who are always going on car launches. That's their job because they're like, you know, banging in the worst drive reviews for a magazine or a paper. Empty paper. fridges. Well, they must be. Mm. But but temptation just to eat yourself stupid. And, I, and yes, there are some stouter figures, gentlemen <laughs> on the scene, I'm sure. But there are also, you know, some people who are pretty svelte considering. They must mm. have incredible self-control. I can't, I mean, that's the thing, I don't go on many events. But if I did, I'd be really fat. That's a really good looking slice. I mm. don't even know what that is. I think it's marshmallow. Really, that's all marshmallow? And that's red velvet cake, I think. I didn't even see that available. But I've got that and stuff. Got some very plump scones. Scones? They scones? are, aren't they? Mm. They're fresh though, because I could smell them when mm. they've gone down. Mm. Hot from the oven. Mm. With a dusting and dusting of. Um, but this is the life of car journalists. Fresh scones. I'm not and sure proper. there's a more British scene at the moment than... Than a man sitting in a Jaguar eating sandwiches off a tiered plate display <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, even it's, know what it's, it's pretty British, I would say. It's incredibly British. Mm. We're in a British car. Look at the leaping cat staring at me. Side profile of. That was a deceptively nice sandwich. Scottish Scotland. sandwich. No, this was the ham. Oh, okay. They put, unbeknownst to me, an expertly applied veneer of mustard inside. Mm. And it just gives it a little, just a little zing. Not too much, not too little. This afternoon, these people aggression. are sandwich pros. And I'm going to have the salmon now, and I'm going to award extra points if there's perhaps a little drizzle of lemon in there. Let's see, shall we? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I've been, you know, you get a tune stuck in your head, it's like, it's a day. It's just, your brain is broken for a day. Mm. You can work through it. Funny, we're saying I can work through it. It's ironic because the tune that's been haunting me now for three days straight is "Got to Get Through This" by Daniel Beddingfield. Really? Funny, I could. Yeah. It's only the intro as well, not even the vocal. Okay. I just, I. Not many words that song, as far as I can work out. That was his bedroom tune, wasn't it? His was big, it? Big break, yeah. I saw him once, Heathrow, at one of those oyster caviar bars. You know the ones, <laughs> he the ones that, that people don't Passport use. gate going, I've got to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, you should write a song about that, Dan. Do you know, he, he could have been turned down and instead of just going straight home, he thought, I'm just going to schoon a load of slippery wondered, oysters. Who eats oysters at an airport? Before you get on a flight. Exactly, because that could go so wrong. I just simply wouldn't. I think I will have the oysters. Do you have any steak tartare? 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely have some of that. Also, some puffer fish, please. Yes. Fresh. <laughs> We're not very good at preparing it, sir. I don't care. I want it. <laughs> I'm about to go on a an 11-hour <laughs> flight, flight yes. to San Francisco, and I insist... In fact, it's kind of my thing. The, <laughs> the spectre of faecal urgency is what gets me through a long flight. <laughs> I already mm. ate a really undercooked pork chop before I left the house this morning. <laughs> and I'm kind of hoping that'll do the business. Yep. Because right. I'll be honest with you, I don't find airline seats very comfortable. Yeah. But airline lavatories, well, they're the most luxurious lavatories in the world. So I, I like to make sure that mm. I'm entitled to sit in there for the duration of the flight mm. by dint of having a runny bum. <laughs> A380's so, got a serious girth to its bathroom as well. If you're on an Airbus A380. I have been on one of those. It's a wider bathroom, I feel. Yeah. Well, it was on the Emirates flight I went on. Oh, well, Emirates. Mm. It's probably like a walk-in bathroom. Has it got a full-size bath in it as well? No, it's got a gym in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think after I went for a while, I did some, like, cur curls. Not like that. I um, <laughs> when was the last time you went to a car boot sale? Because when ago. I when I drove here, yeah. there was one happening, and it was it's a, it's a it's a Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday late morning. Who does a, who does a car boot sale midweek? Because we're in the Cotswolds, there's so many retirees that they can do weekend shit in the week. Mm. Mm. And that is the reason it has to be. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Or. They're selling contraband on the down low. Do it midweek. Less police activity. Could be that. Yeah, there's so many stolen goods being fenced in this area, they have to have car boot sales every day. There's a ton of hooky antiques flying around for like 12 quid. Which, in, in the world of car boot, a 12 quid item is probably quite high. Mm. But when you look at it and go, is that, sure. is that 17th century? And they go, oh yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And Which one's 17th again? Henry VIII? No. All oh, right, whatever. <laughs> Are you an antiques expert? Yeah. Could be. <laughs> Who's asking? Might be. Isn't this on fire? No, it's just antique, mate. Like I that. know what it is. And they don't publicise it in this way. Ah, this is a messy eat. Did you bring any napkins? No. No, I didn't either. No. I've got a jumper in the back, but it's white. <laughs> yeah, it's because I eat this chocolate thing and then wipe my fingers on your white jumper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it's you... a car boot sale for people on witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> now, do, do you feel that's too specific? Or you, you, you think that's all right? Mm. Okay. Do you also think that maybe if you are someone who wants to kill somebody who testified against you and went into witness protection, you would start attending the witness protection car boot sale in order to try and find them and stab we them. Wednesday only car boot sale. Well, you're thinking that the, the kind of person who who was convicted of a crime as a result of a testimony from a person put into protection would now be either still in prison or busy on a Wednesday. Just busy. Busy. Mm -hmm. Busy. <laughs> and then you're in witness protection and you suddenly get a message years down the line from your protection officer going... Uh, bad news, you know um, Fingers McGraw, the person you managed to put away mm. with your testimony, mm. he's retiring from his job. He got out of prison and then he became... Have you ever uh, met anyone on witness protection? Well, I imagine they don't tell you. Do they? I met somebody once and they... What? And they told me. <laughs> 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 what an idiot! Mm. Yeah, genuinely. Why did they tell you? I featured their car in a car magazine. And we got chatting. Gained their trust. I can't tell you any more details. Needless to say, they were in a very, very. Out, out. Certainly can't tell you about their Voxel Astra VXR registration RE16. <laughs> no, they were in a, a very flamboyant custom vehicle, and you think. Ooh. Oh. And and after they told me what they told me, I was like. Are you sure you should be driving around in this A and B? Are you sure you should be getting it magazine featured in one mm. of the largest magazines at the time for vehicles? Wow. 
Maybe it was a shot in the air. Come and get me if you dare. I've got a highly modified 205, so watch out. And I've seen some stuff yeah. that I shouldn't have seen. And I'll be getting away from you as long as there's no large speed bumps because it's got the dimmer kit on it. It's quite <laughs> low, so... Dimmer, oh, dimmer! I haven't thought about this. Um, I'm, I'm going to press on with this marshmallow chocolate slice, <laughs> but I have just developed diabetes from eating it. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, my God. This is so rich. Mm. So, hang on. Don't use all your energy. No, I can't. I can't. I'm, don't. Look, there's a bun. Don't hold up the fucking scones at the car. Don't hold my fucking scones at the car. Also, um, where's the cream and jam? Shit. You're from the West Country. This is basic stuff. Mm. It was there. Oh. And I just walked past it. Mm. I watched um, Bohemian Rhapsody the other day. I didn't oh, realise yeah. Freddie was totally into cats. Was a lot of cats. He had about five of them. No, oh, didn't know that. When he moved into uh, his big, expensive London-based house, mm. it had enough bedrooms for each cat individually. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to see that film. Just, uh, just I don't know, I'm sort of interested. But is is it okay for oh. me to say that I'm really not fussed about Queen? I don't hate them. I'm just a bit like. <laughs> well, I used to be like that. And since having children, I've got I've got quite enthused by that queen. Yeah, that's the thing. They do sort of good kind of sing alongy sort They're of songs, brilliant. don't they? But mm. I don't know. They just don't ever do it for me. The guy. No, no, some of their tracks. I'm saying that. I'm saying John, that. John John Deacon. Yeah. Who wrote um, another one? Bites the dust. I think didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's the quiet man of the group. He's very quiet in the film. Yeah. Realistic. Yeah. Well. The castings are fantastic. Brian May, obviously we know. I mean, not he's flamboyant in his own way, and he's quite passionate with his badges and his goose fury. But uh, and astronomy, and astronomy, quite serious. <laughs> I think that's what puts me off about Queen. Not Brian May per se, but they feel like they're sort of one of those groups that they're a bit too serious. And even though the music they make is quite jolly. They're you too mean serious. off stage sensible? Not even sensible. I mean, you know, Freddie Mercury, by repute, was sort of partying oh. in some quite extravagant ways. But but it always feels like he was doing that. The rest of the band probably he, were just like he partied for all of them. We'll see you tomorrow, Fred. You can come in late if you want, because I can see That's you. Totally what? Late night. Mm, totally. Is that what happened? Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought so. um, it's like you've watched the film, Rich. Maybe I have. I just. God. No, I haven't. I definitely haven't. I, I the Roger Taylor, the sort of quite suave. I always think of him as being quite suave. Mm. He's a man who wears a lot of long scarves with really exquisite overcoats, isn't he? And a lot of <laughs> good hair. From what what are those age. leather jackets with the elasticated waistband? That you know? <laughs> like a buck of leather bomber jackets. <laughs> a blues on. <laughs> Do you think he's a blues on man? <laughs> I don't know. I see. I see him as. I think even in the summer, because it's just his look. Good hair, uh, sort of quiffy grey. Good, good yeah. hair, strong hair. Sunglasses, nice pair of expensive sunglasses. Yeah. But then he, he just completes the look with a with a long, not knotted, just hanging. Yeah. Expensive and exquisite scarf, and then a really nice. He couldn't operate any kind of um, dangerous machinery with the typical. No, because he's just he going <laughs> too scarf. Would have had, I mean, Brian May can't either. Cause For a different hair. reason, yeah, yeah. So, so don't get them anywhere near an engineering workshop. Freddie no was late. too... Yeah, Freddie, Freddie was too off his face on booze and drugs and cats. So, yeah. so that, that's why poor old John Deacon... He just had spent, to do all the light engineering in Queen. Yeah, he, he did. was the only one who could operate a machine. Is it, it's probably true. Yeah. Certainly probably. true. That's why he was, he's, he's the quiet man. That's why he's a bit miserable. It's why when, when Freddie died, I think he just went, that's it, I'm done, lads. Yeah. Didn't he? He just went, oh, I don't want to carry on this. Well, what he was actually saying was, I'm sick of having to work the Queen lathe. <laughs> and the Queen bandsaw. <laughs> queen welding equipment. It's just, I'm so, why is it? Okay, oh, but luckily, Brian, tell you what, could you knock up just a, a, a square section steel frame just to rest uh, some of these keyboards on? <laughs> well, why can't you do it? 
Um, ahem. <laughs> Fire risk. Uh. Rog, could you... <laughs> Stop taking not. that off. <laughs> Freddie. But, Freddie. Oh, my God. He's... He's Do you know how the band got back a together? a load, a load of um, uh, night nurse. It's <laughs> caused drowsiness, and you know what it says on the instructions about heavy machinery, or any kind of machinery, so he's out, and there's poor Deacon, just like, oh, for fuck's sake, all right, I'll do it. It's last time, okay? Mm. When he dies, I'm out of this group. Mm. What? Who says I'm dying? Oh, um, <laughs> I opened your post. Um, <clears throat> well... Do you know how the band got back together post Freddy? Um, Brian and John Deacon really wanted some, uh, just some shims sorting out on the, on the, on the lake. They need some shims made. For <laughs> some, some because they don't need some, no, do you know what? <laughs> they got John Deacon out Seriously, of time. do you know how? No. Well, Brian's quite progressive. <laughs> right, and he was like, "I know, I know how to solve this engineering conundrum that's causing so much tension, <laughs> so much friction, and not of the kind that allows a lathe to work." Yeah, three D printing. Ah, it's in a cabinet. You press go, you feed it the CAD material. No, but 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 Deacon no. didn't join back in. But I think it might be fair to say that who, who did they get into sing? Paul Rogers was he in the vanguard of three D printing? Did he was? Didn't he George Michael do some? Yeah, and then that bloke out of Maroon 5 did as well. Mm. He's a flute. He is a flute, isn't he, with his, his, his weirdly gristly body. Adam Levine. Adam Levine, that's the one. I don't imagine he's got a 3D printer. He looks like the kind of, the kind of prick who'd just get someone else to do it. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> and of course I'm not a prick, because I'm sat in a car park with a carousel of food on my lap. I'd like to see Levine try that one. Do you know what? He'd have dropped a scone all by All this now, icing... Because he's, too, he's too gristly. All this icing makes it look like I've got a load of Boutros garlic. <laughs> just <laughs> liberally. Just, yeah, I saw that Johnny Smith off the telly the day. He was doing coke off a of china plate in a parked jam. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody TV stars will pay too much. Mm, what, what, no, what would the headlines say? Um, Unpopular TV twat. In, <laughs> in class A drug romp. <laughs> Fifth gear. Oh! I, I like euphemisms for, for drugs. They're always fascinating. Bit of Billy. Yeah, there's bit lots, of, aren't there? Mm, bit of meow meow. Um, I remember my... I once was at a house party in um, London's Primrose Hill and this really drunk Geordie man came up to me and went, and it took a couple of goes to figure out what he was on the back. He went, excuse me, me. I was like, why? I didn't know him. He's like just a random stranger. And he, me, me, gandy, me, gandy. <laughs> and I was like, me, me, what? He spoke in a really weird way. I thought he'd had a stroke or something. <laughs> but it turned out he was just drunken from Newcastle. He was asking for nose candy. Nose candy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really drunk. A friend of mine was that we were having an idle moment driving, trying to think of new words for cocaine. A bit of Nicky Nauda. Yeah, cool. that's quite. Is that? Well, like did you tell me that? <laughs> I can't remember if that's actual street slang. <laughs> well, if it is, I don't know. Um, Cheeky bit of Nicky. Yeah, but you could just start making them up and seeing if you could introduce them into popular go circulation. Go on, then. Go on, then. What, what drink um, are you going to choose? Um, well, I'll go cocaine. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to call it? Got any? Yeah, I was going to say. So if I was making up a name for cocaine, I don't know. It's just going to like it's completely random. Like I don't know. Cool. Spanish cheese. <laughs> handsome Gareth. Handsome Gareth. Yeah, go, have, you got any, have you got any handsome? What are you calling that? Handsome Gareth. It's rhyming slang. For what? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of what I would call it. Um, Scottish grit. Eagle chalk. <laughs> Eagle chalk. I mate, have you got any um <laughs> got any owl scrapings? <laughs> Sorry what? Got any, any owl scrapings? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs. 
saw drugs. I don't know. No. Don't go for there, just tell me to ask. I quite like this. We used to make up Rami say, not for drugs, just for things in my old flat when I was a student. Mm. Just take the names of celebrities and use them as rhyming slang. Mm. My favourite was Rodney Buse for shoes. Got your Rodneys? Yeah. But I'd like to make up uh, slang for drugs that doesn't even rhyme, but just, just using celebrities. Got any, uh, got any Angela Lansbury? What's that? Be a cheeky bit of Angela. Yeah. That does sound like drugs, doesn't it? Yeah. Lansbury sounds a bit drugsy. Everything sounds a bit drugsy. Well, it does because we just thought, yeah. Could you, you just use go, the yeah. tone of voice and the suspicion? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, I've got any, like, there's I'm a town to... up the road from here called <clears throat> Chipping Camden, which starts to sound drugsy if you frame it in that, yeah. that way. Mm. Um, I don't know. I always the model to... of a car. What, um, hang on. What's the, Kia what, Sedona. What's the top end Ford that isn't called gear or titanium? Vignali. Right. Well, that sounds very drugsy. It's massively drugsy. Hey, mate, have you got any Vignali? Yeah. What the fuck is this? It's just a load of quilted leather with some, ah, uh, like high-end stereo stuff. I asked you some Vignali. What are you giving me? You appear to be giving me a high depreciation version of the Mondeo. That's what you asked for. Oh yeah, isn't it shit? We better go and give this china back to our hosts before they assume that we're stealing it. Do you want any more of this? No, I've got, oh, I've told you, I've got diabetes. I am full as tight as a drum. <sighs> well, I've got a lot what, of... Just another day in the life of a car journalist. I've got an awful lot of... What? Oh. Frank Sittner in your, uh, in your lap. A Miami talc on my lap. <laughs> <laughs>